so today we are going to go through how to set up Google Classroom within our division. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up Google Chrome. When we open up Google, there's one thing that we should all look for, and that is our little icon over here. So when you see an icon, it should probably look like an empty person to you. If you've never logged into Google Chrome, that's what it will appear as. You're just going to click it and make sure that you are indeed logged in with your GSCS credentials. If not, it'll ask you to sign in. Please sign in using those credentials, not your personal Gmail account, as you won't have the same access. Once you do that, it'll prompt you to sync, allow it, allow the link, and then we're off to a good start. From there, you're going to want to click on our portal. So you can access that by going to portal.gscs.ca. In everyone's portal screen, you will have a Google Apps icon you can click on that and it will take you here. Within our applications, you will see right away Classroom. This is where we're going to begin. When we click on Classroom, your screen should be a blank screen. You should see an arrow that will direct you to this plus button. Click on the plus button and press create class. Your class name will be visible to all students and parents if you choose to add them. So please make sure you choose an appropriate class name that will help you identify or your students identify whose class it is if you're high school and maybe they're in more than one. For today, we're going to create a test class. The section, the subject, the room, doesn't really matter. If you would like to add it in, if you're, let's say, a high school science teacher, go ahead. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Press Create. So now you have your classroom. All of these themes can be changed. So if right away you're like, what is this? We're not rock climbing. You can go ahead. You can choose something else. Maybe one of these guys and it will just change the appearance. So once we're in this, it should prompt you to take a little bit of a tour. You can follow those clicks, you can tour around and see what Google Classroom offers. It's actually probably a good idea to take that tour and to take a look. Once you've done that, I want to show you what some things are that you should do before adding people in. So right away, if you were to add your students in, they would have access to post a bunch of things on this stream page. They would be able to comment on each other's posts, they could post pictures, videos, they could do whatever. Since we don't have the opportunity to teach digital citizenship for this program in person, our best bet is just to turn that off right away. So we're going to go over here to the settings options. We're going to scroll down until we see stream. Stream is that home page that we were just on. We don't want students to be able to post and comment. Maybe after they get used to it, then that's an option. But for now, let's make it that they can only comment on things that you have posted. Um, another option is only teachers can comment or post. But I like to keep it on students can only comment just for the purpose of if you put an assignment on there or a due date or welcome, you still want your students to be able to interact with you and to talk and to have the ability to comment or ask questions. We're going to press save. And that's now available to them. Our next thing is adding in students. So you can see up here at the top that we have a bunch of different options. Stream is like your homepage. It would be like your Facebook stream. 
So you can post updates. Anytime you post an assignment, it'll come up here with a little icon. If they have something coming up that's due, it'll show them over here. Anything you want will just be in this live stream, the most recent at the top. If you go to classwork, this is where you would design your assignments or quizzes or material, whatever else you have. And where we're going now is people. So this is how we add students in. So you have two ways of adding them in. The first way would be our preferred way because it has the le least amount of steps. So what you can see when you're here is that you have an option to, number one, add in other teachers. So if I want to add in maybe my phys ed teacher if I'm elementary or my um, LAT or anyone else who was already working within my class, I could just click on this add button. Since it's all connected to our division, all you would need to do would be to type in their GSCS email. They should pop up. Press invite. And now their name is there. You know you've invited the right person. It will let you know when they accept that invite. It'll send them an email. And then they will also have access to post on this class and to be part of that collaborative learning. Under students, you can see that there is a class code that displays here. This is the class code that you're going to want to email out to your families or to your students or however you're communicating with them and get them that code. That's the easiest way for them to log into Google Classroom in the least amount of steps. All they need to do is go to classroom.google.com they will be given a home page that looked very similar to yours. They're just going to be asked um, if they're a teacher or a student, they'll click student, and then they'll have that plus button, they'll press join, and they'll be able to put in that code automatically, they'll see your whole class. When that happens, their names are going to pop up just like Andrea's did here. So you'll have a list of students who have joined, and they'll have access to everything that you post. Another option which will involve students accessing their email is to press this plus button here and you can add in their student numbers at gscs.ca and invite them. So I am making up a student number. If I were to do that and click it, and press invite, the name of that student would actually pop up below once I pressed invite and then it would say um, pending response or it wouldn't be bolded yet. Just as Andrea's isn't, I can tell that she hasn't accepted it yet. Once you've done that, once your students are in, um, you can then start posting or start adding classwork. Let's just go back to our stream and let's do a post as a welcome post. So when you click that icon there, you have an option to add to many different classes if you are teaching more than one class. You can then send it out to all students or if I were to have students in the class, it would give me a list and I would be able to take out certain students or only send it to certain students. I can then write a message or I could press the add button over here and I could add something in that I have stored in my Google Drive. I could add a file, a link maybe to a website, I could put in a YouTube video, doesn't matter. I've actually saved a video that I've created that I am going to upload might take a minute or two 
And then I can just post that right away. It's a little more interactive for my students. They can tell that I'm actually there. It's not just a computer screen, which can sometimes be a little more user friendly and give them a little bit of a settling feeling in using an online platform. How I did that was I just used my computer video. I simply recorded it, saved it as a file, and now I'm just putting it in here. All right, so that's taking a bit too long to load. I'm just going to exit out. If it were to work, it would pop up right here. They would all be able to see it and click on it, watch it, and then all I do is press post. If I don't want to post this today, I want to wait a few days, I can schedule it to come out at a different date and a different time, or I can save it as a draft and I can revisit it at a different time. Um, I can edit and add something in later, and that's just right up here in saved announcements. If I want to edit it, I just click and then I can post it, and it's now live.